a crisis of leadership. We've been talking about this all week. But what if there was some sort of outer space crisis? An alien invasion sounds crazy, perhaps. But then who thought we'd ever see the stock market swing 5% a day all week long? So maybe it's not as far-fetched as it sounds. If aliens invaded, who would step up to lead us in that fight, and could we even win? That's just one of the questions the Discovery Channel's new series, Curiosity, looks at. Joining me now is physics professor Michio Kaku, who is a consultant for the series. Professor, welcome. The, the biggest question before we get any invasion is, do aliens even exist, and how, how would we know? Well, the Kepler satellite currently orbiting in outer space has identified about 50 50 planets that seem very much Earth-like. In fact, every week we discover another Jupiter-sized planet in outer space. Now, to be sure, most of them probably have no more than microbial life, just germs. But a few of them may have intelligent life, perhaps even more advanced than what we have on Earth. Now, so how did this, uh, how does this actually work? When Discovery decided they were going to do a show on alien invasions, your phone rings because you're on the sort of speed dial for theoretical physicists who can help them do the war game for how this might play out? Well, believe it or not, we physicists have actually studied the question of what happens if we do encounter a hostile advanced civilization in space, and Hollywood gets it all wrong. Hollywood assumed that the aliens are maybe a hundred years more advanced than us, and if only we had a secret weapon we can defeat the aliens. Wrong. Either the aliens don't bother with us because we're simply too primitive, or if they do invade, it'll be more like Bambi versus Godzilla. And, and why, why, why do you say that? What, what techniques will they have that we can't even imagine? Think of the fact that they could be a thousand, a million years more advanced than us. Realize that the universe is 13.7 billion years old, and so it's conceivable that they can have weapons that we can't even conceive of. Now, in my own point of view, look at how the barbarians eventually defeated the Romans. The barbarians didn't have a secret of weapons by which they defeated Caesar and the Romans, no. They learned technology from the Romans. They imported technology, they learned the technology technology of the Romans and then used it against the Roman Empire. That's how they won. So then how would we, uh, I know it sounds uh, implausible, but if something like this were to happen, how would we defend ourselves as a planet? Well, initially, we would have to probe them to find out exactly how advanced they are. Do they have nuclear weapons? Do they have radio and radar communications technology? Or do they have a whole new generation of weapons that we can't even conceive of? Now, remember that for the most part, alien civilizations in outer space are not going to come to plunder us because there are plenty of uninhabited planets out there with resources. So for the most part, they're going to leave us alone. However, if, on the other hand, one day they do attack, we have to be prepared for the fact that they're going to overwhelm us in the opening shots of a war. Well, what, so, so what do we do? Well, first we have to study the question. We have to send up more Kepler satellites. We have to eavesdrop on conversations in outer space between alien civilizations. This is something that we haven't even done yet. We have yet to find a single advanced civilization or life in outer space. But sooner or later, we will. The first step is to monitor them, to understand what level of civilization they have, the kinds of weapons. Second, perhaps even begin to initiate a dialogue. Now, of course, that's dangerous if they are warlike, in which case we may want to sit back and simply analyze their weaponry. Now, uh, it, it, why do we assume that they're going to be hostile? Isn't there a chance that uh, any aliens we encounter could come to us more like E.T. and less like uh, Predator? Yeah, personally, I think for the most part, alien civilizations that are a million years ahead of us have had a million years to sort out racial, sectarian, and religious differences among themselves. So I think for the most part, they're going to be peaceful. And for the most part, they're going to find resources on uninhabited planets. Why bother with the Earth with restive natives when you have all these other planets loaded with natural resources and nobody lives on them. However, we do have to plan for the day that maybe a few of them could be hostile. Now, uh, I'm wondering if there can't be an upside to all this. I'm a big fan of the original Star Trek series, and it was only when, uh, you know, there were alien civilizations that seemed to uh, challenge 
the Earth, that you found that the Earth got its act together for the kind of global governance that all the, uh, you know, all the visionaries say we need that if we're going to deal with climate change, if we're going to deal with all the, uh, all the modern issues, global finance, where the, our, our, the sovereignty of individual nations is actually a political barrier to solving these big problems. So can there be an upside to the alien threat? Believe it or not, when President Ronald Reagan met Mikhail Gorbachev, we now know during the transcripts of the meeting that he said that if we were ever attacked by the Martians, you and me, the Soviets and the capitalist U.S., would be allies in the fight against the Martians. Well, that's how Ronald Reagan looked at it, and believe it or not, there's some truth to it. If we are faced with a common enemy in outer space, it would indeed help to unite the Earth just the way Ronald Reagan said. All right, Michio Kaku, theoretical physicist and an advisor to the new Discovery series, Curiosity. We'll be looking forward to seeing how Discovery treats that, uh, and thanks for taking the time today. Right. Every Sunday at 8 o'clock. Every Sunday at 8 o'clock. A, a theoretical physicist who knows how to get in his promo. I like that. Chuck Todd, live from Iowa with the latest on the AIM straw poll ahead. That's next.